Hey guys, how you guys doing? Today we're going to talk about a Linux distribution that is based off of Red Hat Linux. It is not Fedora. Uh, it has product support and it is actually very nice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification button. Because it's based off of Red Hat Linux, it lends to stability that you would find with Red Hat and you would in Fedora as well. So that is a big plus outside of the fact that you actually have product support as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And here we're going to go to their web page first to take a look at it. So uh, you can find it at en.eurolinux.com. Well, it's euro-linux.com. Uh, and what it is is where I'm at is on their web page. Here it reads, uh, Eurolinux is a Polish enterprise class Linux distribution that has been developed since 2013. Eurolinux is built upon the foundation of Red Hat, which we talked about. Source code just guarantees its compatibility with RHEL, Oracle, Linux, CentOS, as well as new recently published community distributions, Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. So these guys are all based off of Red Hat and they're all tied together to a degree that they're com very compatible. So a lot of each is uh, different uh, repositories will work the same as well. Uh, Eurolinux offers the same operating environment of software designed for these systems. So what's available on one is available on all, uh, which that stands to reason that it's all based off of Red Hat anyhow. So um, it uses the same hardware certification as well, and the system is maintained and developed by experienced architects and developers. It is available in two versions, paid and free. The paid version provides additional tech support, whereas the free version um, is just that. It's used at your own risk. So when you go to the shop area, if, I'm just going to jump. I mean, it, it's basically GNOME centric, as you can see in the pictures is what it looks like. It looks like it's GNOME centric and you know, it tells you what it's about. You can go to older versions, you know, the fair price, the, the universal uh, migration, in other words, upgrading from one or changing from one to another, uh, one one-on-one -on -one compatibility with Red Hat Linux and you know, real support. You want to download it, you go, these are, if you take the time to read here, these are differences obviously that tells you what's the difference between the paid and the free version. But if you want to go to products, you go to the Euro Linux desktop new, and then this is where it explains more in detail about the, the actual desktop and what it provides as well. However, if you go down to the very bottom, this would be where you go to download. You can download either through the download button, which will take you to the free version. And then the other one is with order support. If you click on order support, it takes you to your different levels of tier support that you can buy. However, though, this is different. If you look, other than if you click up on the upper right hand corner, the shop button, if you click on the shop button, you actually get a premium Euro Linux premium. Now I'm thinking that these are for the server side because they do offer, if we go back, over to the Euro Linux regular desktop. See, if you look here, you have Euro Linux, which is better enterprise class Linux for, for their servers, right? Now, if you click, then they have the Euro app, AP, which is application platform. Then they have the DB, which is their, their uh, database platform, which is like the server side. Then MAN, which is their management based platform. And then they have actually storage, which I'm assuming is like uh, for cloud storage platform as well, which that makes sense. And, and so then back, back and forth, we go again. So, I mean, I think when you go to the shop, those are the, the that's the support that they're talking about. The, the premium, the basic and the standard is for those, because if you see, you know, it has 10, virtual servers you know or one virtual server i mean so so i mean there's different like i said there's different 
they they support all of their products but at the bottom of the desktop is where you would buy your product support for the desktop edition which comes in standard and basic and it comes in a one year and three year support so the basic support um it, when you click on it it basically provides the windows like rich multimedia support access to 2000 or more applications 200 audio and video programs yada 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 the number number of cpus does not affect the price now if you go to the one year or sorry the three year support or, i mean sorry my bad not the standard support um it includes the same and it contains the standard support, which means you will get technical assistance with accessibility at standard working hours, eight hours, Monday through Friday. So um, it's kind of hard to dis ascertain really what the what the major difference is other than you get means you will receive installation oh, and migration assistance. That's it. They won't help you with other things. Okay, that's what it is. So you get full support with the standard and with basic support you get basically they help you install it and migrate, which that's not a lot of support. I mean, unless you absolutely have no idea what you're doing. Uh the so and I did buy the standard uh when I downloaded this and what it get what uh it cost me was uh, 35 USD or 25 euro here so it's you know it, it i think you know there, i don't think there's anything wrong with this i think it's nice that you get support so if you're new to linux user and you want to use a very stable rock solid platform based distribution red hat is the one of the titans of the industry has been out there forever they've actually are the ones that pioneered the actual tech support for linux in the first place they were the ones starting tech support for their servers year decades ago the reality of it is if you want a tried to tested type community for support this is definitely a viable option also if you get the standard that can help you with multiple other things other than just migration to it and or installation only so if you go to the bottom like I said, you can download the basic or place your order for your support, which they'll set up in a, a customer service portal account, which will give you the download there. Now, for this demo, I I paid for mine on Friday. They were obviously closed over the weekend. I didn't assume much that they were going to give me a, uh, 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 an, a downloaded ISO and a portal set up because they were probably off enjoying their weekend. So I probably will not get it till Monday. So what will happen is when I'm, I'm doing this review based off of the free version when i get the paid version i'll re-review it again and point out any differences if there are any and so that is basically how you can get your paid version of this euro linux with the support okay so here it is loaded in my virtual machine i'm going to log in and this is what you're greeted with right here uh, this is a very nice, clean, uh, this is their Euro Linux customized version of GNOME. I like the look of it. This is not the original wallpaper. There was another one that came in. Actually, let's see. Change background. Let's go to the backgrounds. Uh, this one here was the one that it comes with. I like this one, so I changed it to this one. And once again, as you can see, this is your settings, which is very gnome centric, like their settings panel. To switch it from light and dark, uh, like I'll open up, uh, let's open up, uh, what are we, files, which is gnome files, of course. I'm going to open this up. And then down here on the right hand corner next to your power session is a, is a moon. This is where you toggle from light and dark. That is pretty sweet. <laughs> that, that is pretty sweet that you can do that just like that normally you go into a settings and your global settings somewhere and you hit you know dark mode or or with gnome you got to go into gnome tweak tool to, to, to enable the, the the dark themes so uh, that that is pretty doggone nice right there so anyhow this is what you're greeted with you have you know a couple icons on your desktop the home directory which if you open it it opens up gnome to your home directory hey and then of course the trash can down in the bottom is your panel which has some transparency to it which is very nice i think that is a nice little added touch because normally it's solid you know or gradient you know uh, version of it and then 
it's the typical standard gnome type panel where you have your application launcher on the left hand side with your pinned task uh uh or favorites if you want to call them uh i soft application software that you use then you have your time and date which if you click on that opens up your hidden notifications area as well as a calendar and then once again i showed you the light and dark mode button that's next to that and then you have your power session your volume and your network act indicate uh indicator icon there which if you click on that then it opens up all of it so it shows you your volume and and also your power settings as well and you can balance between your in your in your power session to log in and out so there's that that's the basic crux of the panel now let's go ahead and take a look at at the pinned icons that are here so it's going to open up fire firefox i'm not sure if it's an esr or the standard firefox but we're going to go here we're going to find out and then we're going to go to about Firefox and it is version 102.3 ESR, the 64 bit version. So, yes, uh, it is an ESR version. It's nice. It's clean. It'll, it goes right to their web page. So, if you need support or any useful links, they're right here. Also, community and social media. They got Reddit, their LinkedIn, their Twitter, and their Facebook account right there. So, you have access to them there as well. If you click on files, it's obviously known files. I want to see where we're at what version we're on because this will kind of give you a feel about oh 40 so yes it's an older version of the gnome desktop which is a more stable version so it's it's definitely lts so it's 40.2 and assuming that you're going to get basic support i would assume that they're going to sell you and and want you to use the lts version of everything so that that way they can guarantee more rock solid experience as well as long-term support availability is a lot easier on that than a rolling release of course software center is the gnome software center it's your typical standard one it's there's a little bit more curated however because i believe if you go let's see where their software repositories are and flat hub is not supported even though it's enabled that's weird <clears throat> yeah it's all their their data their repositories so it's basically there so you would probably have to add repositories like rpm fusion or any of those kind of guys in here at your own leisure down the road also this is if we'll see what's installed it's got brazero installed archive manager it's got your standard gnome suite tools as well as LibreOffice installed that's the standard pretty much so run-of-the-mill software center it's just curtailed to their repository so whatever curated apps and programs that they've put into their repositories for for you to have uh, access to is what they have and those are the ones that they maintain so let's go ahead and click the uh, the application so we're going to click on there and here's our launcher and this is what we're greeted with one simple page not a lot installed right off the bat as we saw through the uh software tool because it's simple clean obviously uh doesn't come bloated with a lot of stuff so let's open up the system monitor because i doubt they have neofetch or any of that in theirs and i'm not really gonna look at it so it comes up with the temp typical uh gnome system process monitor and so here's you click on the system tab these are all your services that are running very nice resources this is your hardware resources let's open this up a little bit bigger so you guys can see it network is doing fine at memory we're sitting at 1.8 oh that is one thing to note even in the basic download it was like a 6.8 gigabyte iso so there's a lot of stuff in the background probably for their theming that they've done and also it comes with probably multiple when we go to log out i'll see it probably comes with multiple different uh sessions that you can log into derivatives from i believe it comes with wayland this is the wayland one and then they have an exorg one and they have a standard gnome one so i mean there's all that so either way for for the cores for cpus it's not using hardly any of them uh the memory like i said it's using a lot probably because of the different sessions that are running in the background but for the most part this is actually a very nice streamlined operating system i really find it clean neat it's uh what i like about it is the great support that you have ability for you to add what you want to it and that's it now what's in their distributions i don't know if there's a software package that you want to install that is not in there or in the repositories i'm sorry that is not in their repositories then obviously you're going to have to go out and either build it from source or add any additional repositories that you might have to which is simple as a google search on 
what package it is for Fedora. And then you can add that repository. However, though, be warned that if the dependencies for that are not also in that same repository, because a lot of times those dependencies are found in the standard Fedora repository, then you may have to download those dependencies and build them yourself as well and or add another repository that contains those repositories like the standard Fedora repository. Uh, but either way, that is a very nice distribution that they've put together. So uh, let's click out here. I want to go to the power session and see what the different um, versions are that you can log in under right here at the bottom in this cog wheel right here at the bottom right hand corner of this cog wheel they've got the standard Wayland display server one which is the one that is comes by default they got the gnome classic the gnome classic on xorg so the standard Wayland is the one that's their customized desktop gnome classic is the standard gnome classic gnome classic on xorg and then custom one we'll tell you my thoughts on it so it's gnome to me the reason why i want to do the video is basically because of the support that this that this distribution has and that you can purchase. Take a look at it, throw it in a virtual machine, spin it up, put it on hardware, whichever one you want to do. Uh, give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you guys could please pop over to the patreon.com, the underscore Linux underscore tube over there and uh, become a, a supporter of the channel over there. I'd greatly appreciate it because any support I get would be just wonderful. Either way, you guys keep doing what you guys do and you guys keep on Linuxing.